Hello, dear brothers and sisters. I just want to wish everyone happy Mother's Day, whether you have children that you have bore or had, or if you haven't, because the Bible says that many are the children of the barren. So I just want to thank you guys for tuning back in to hear the word of the Lord. So today I will be talking about our enemies which is God's enemies. So we'll begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. God, we just thank you so much for this day. We are so grateful, my God, for your strength and your power and your grace and your mercy, Father God. If it wasn't for you, Father God, we would have given up, my God. But I thank you for your power and your strength, my God. And the faith of adversity, my God, you anoint us, Father God, to have the power, my God, to face our enemies, Father God, with boldness, Father God. And we just thank you for your word. I pray, Father God, that our hearts will be ready to receive what you have for us, my God. May you open our eyes, our ears, and our spirit, man, to grow, to develop, to change, to convict. Father God, I just thank you for everything you are doing. Father God, you get all the glory and you get all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today I will be talking about our enemies. So I remember once hearing um, somebody say in a book that I had read that it says that when you give your life to the Lord, you not only inherit the good things from God, but you like the blessings from God, the promises from God, but you also inherit the enemies of God. And I thought that was so powerful because a lot of the times we overlook the things that come with us giving our life to the Lord. We just kind of focus on the good stuff like, oh, you know, Jesus, and he's gonna bless me, and I'm gonna get married, and in my house, and my ministry, and we focus on all these good things, which is great because that's what we're supposed to do. But sometimes it's important to remember when we go through trials and tribulations and seasons of discomfort, seasons of growth, seasons that God is molding us and shaping us for his kingdom, that we are gonna overcome the situation, but the enemy knows the call that we have in our life. The enemy knows why we are here. We didn't go through all of what we have went through for nothing. There's a reason and there's a purpose why we're here and the enemy is trying to come to distract us and distort our plan that God has for us. So he sets up these little people to get us tired, to, you know, to exhaust us, to, you know, to disturb our spirit, to get us angry, to grieve our spirit. And we have to kind of we always got to be aware that these people are, that are coming against us is just not that they're coming against us, but they're coming against God himself. So these are not just not enemies of us, but these are enemies of God. And as I was reading the Bible, the Lord wanted me to talk about this because it's important to talk about our enemies. And the scriptures on, I'm going to begin with Psalm 45, number uh, Psalm 43, number 5. It says, why are you cast down? Oh, my soul, why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. So I'm going to read it again. The Bible is saying in verse 5, why are you cast down? Oh, my soul, why are you sad? Oh, my soul, why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. So we go through seasons, we go through valleys, we go through deserts, we go through seasons that we don't like, but yet we are supposed to hope in God, that God, no matter what situation, no matter what trial we're going through, that God is our help. The, and then it says the help of my countenance. So sometimes when we're upset or, or sad or mad or angry, you can see it in your face, but it's saying right there that if we hope in God, he will be the help 
of our incontinence, my God. So first we must remember that no matter what, we are supposed to have hope in God, no matter the situation. And then I'm going to move on to Psalm 44, number one. It says, we have heard with our ears, O God. Our fathers have told us the deeds you did in, the, in their day. In the days of old, you drove out the nations with your hand. But, you, but then you planted them. You afflicted the people and cast them out. For they did not go, go gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own hands or own arms save them. But it was your right hand, your right arm, the light of your countenance, because you favored them. So this is important to remember that in times when we are in, are in seasons of conflict, when we are in seasons, that there's really nothing that we can do to save ourselves because God strategically puts us in that position that we're in that nobody can help us. We're there and no matter who we talk to, no matter how we try to get out of it, it's almost like they don't hear us and they don't care. But thank God that he that he allows us to go through things so we can see his mighty right arm and his mighty right hand of deliverance to come to save us when we're in those positions. But for right here, number three, it says, for they did not gain possession of their land by their own sword. So when we're here to possess the land, it's saying that we are not going to possess the land, the territory by our own strength. It's saying, nor did their own arm save them. So there's no, nothing in our own arm that can save us. It says, but it was your right hand, your right arm, and the light of your countenance because you favored them. So if we are walking in the ways of the Lord and we are highly favored, God is going to fight and hand over the, t the the territory that belongs to us. So I love that because sometimes we get so stressed out thinking, how can we figure it out? How can we get out of this? How can we do this? But yet here is saying that it was not in our own strength and there's nothing that we can do, but that God did it for us because we were favored by the Lord. And number four says, you are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Through you, we will push down our enemies. Through your name, we will trample those who rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. But you have saved us from our enemies and have put to shame those who hated us. So right there, the Lord is saying that God is the one that will push our enemies away. That, that we will not trust in the bow or the sword to save us. But God will save us from the enemy and put to shame those who have hated us. And then we're going to jump to 16, uh, still on verse Psalm 44. Verse 16, it says, Because of the voice of him who reproaches and reviles, because of the enemy and the avenger. When we're going through seasons where the enemy has set up people to come against us, it becomes tiring. If he tries to weigh you down and tries to exhaust you, sometimes you feel like you don't have up strength to continue to go to the next season to continue to, to get up and to continue to fight the good fight of faith. But we must remember that we have to stay in position and keep focus on God and keep our eyes on him because he will deliver us. And we need to have patience and not run away from what the Lord is doing. We need to stand still and see the salvation is of the Lord. We will see our enemies fall down. We will see our enemies trip on the snare they have set before us. But the Lord wants me to let you know that we need to be patient until the time that God has chosen. Because I know that we 
don't like to wait because we are impatient we're control freaks we like to be in control but we need to need to need to learn how to trust the lord's timing and yes it's hard it's hard 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 but that's part of it the bible says pick up your cross and follow me that's a part of picking up your cross that's a part of long suffering for the lord number 17 it says and all this has come upon us but we have not forgotten your you nor have we dealt falsely with your covenant our heart has not turned back nor have our steps departed from your ways it says but you have severely broken us in the place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death if we had forgotten the name of our god or stretch out our hand to a foreign god would you not search us out for we know the secrets of the heart yet for your sake we are killed all day we are counted as sheep for the slaughter you know and it has this has we're dealing with this that the lord is gonna fight for us and god is gonna deliver us somehow we must partake as well in the sufferings of christ because we can say all day long that you know as christians we can say all day long as christians that we understand the suffering of the lord and that we partake in him but not until we have to live through what the lord lived through we won't understand the pain we won't understand the agony and i know that what we go through is nothing compared to what the lord went through but in those times as christians it's when we grow because we learn that there's nothing inside of us we we know that there's nothing inside of us that can deliver us but as we continue as we grow in the lord and we continue to have more self-control we continue to have more um it's pretty much self-control self-control that there we that we we must rely on god that we must trust in him and that when we need to have self-control in our mouth and we ha must have self-control in our actions and we must have self-control in everything that we are doing so in those moments that we are continuing to trust in the lord we have to continue to remember the words that he speaks to us daily according to the scriptures so I will continue to read on verse number 45. And it says, I recite my composition concerning the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So as we continue to walk in our walk with the Lord, we continue to remember that this that we're going through is something that is written by the king. And it is nothing new for the king of the things that we go through. Because at verse number two in uh, chapter 45, verse number two, it says, you are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. And then he tells us, gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty one, with your glory and with your majesty. And in your majesty, write properly because of truth, humility, and righteousness. And your right hand shall teach you awesome things. So verse number four is saying, and in your majesty, ride prosperously. So I believe that the Lord allows us to go through trials and through tribulations because he is molding us and shaping us because of where he's taking us is territory, kingdom territory for himself. And when we arrive there, we must be like Joseph. We have to have already learned how to be humble, how to be like him how not to be prideful or envious or think that we did anything out of our own strength. So the Lord is not only shaping us and molding us through trials and through tribulations and how he has allowed this, this whole, you know, he orchestrates everything. And even though the enemy thinks that he has, he that he's on the winning side, he doesn't know that God is in it for our own for our good for our own good but for his kingdom because the number four says and in your majesty ride prosperously so god desire us to be prosper 
but then it says because of truth, humility, and righteousness. So there's a reason why we are going through certain things because these characteristics must be developed in our life. And it says, and in your right hand shall teach you awesome things. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The people fall under you. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your, of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, O God, your God. So this is God's going to begin to like to speak over us. It says, therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And your garments are scented with mirth, aloe, and cassia. So I love that because the Bible right here is saying that our garments are scented with myrrh and aloe and cassia. So sometimes you think when you're around certain places and positions how people are just randomly like come against you. And then as I read the scripture, I was like, because we smell different, we are scented with the Holy Spirit. So when we come to the new place, when we come to wherever we're going, the enemy rises up because he smells something different. It says, out of the ivory places, out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you, king's daughters are among you. Honorable woman, at your right hand stand in the queens of gold of Ophir. Listen, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people and your own father's house. So the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him. And the, dire, and the daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The rich of the people will seek your favor. So as God is preparing us for greatness, here God is saying that there is a preparation that has to be made the same as Esther. For us, we are being prepared for the king. And we are favored by him for the things that we will do in the future. But there must there's a preparation that is coming. It says, the rich among the people will seek you. The royal daughter is all glorious within her place. Her clothing is woven with gold. She shall be brought to the king in robes of many colors. Many colors like Joseph, because he was favored out of all his brothers. The virgin, her companions who follows her, shall be brought to you with gladness and rejoicing. They shall be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of your father shall be your sons, who shall make the princess on all the earth. And your name will be remembered. Therefore, people shall praise you forever and ever. I just love that. That speaks of God's calling in our life. Preparation to where we are going. And how God is equipping us for every good work. But here on, on Psalm 91, 14, it says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. So we must be sure that as we're going through this, that our heart is fully, fully trusting in the Lord to be able to make it to the other side. It says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver and honor him. Psalm 92, uh, 10. But my horn you have exalted like wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. 11. My enemies have seen my desire. My eyes have seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear the, my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. So right there is also saying that what we have desire for, for the wicked. It says 11, my eyes have also seen my desire on my enemies and my ears hear my desire of the wicked who rose up against me. Number 13, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. So as we continue to, to read the scriptures and we continue to see how God has everything planned out and that nothing is new for us and how the enemy, how the enemy 
tries to set us up, how the enemy tries to do this evil deeds and evil works. And he thinks that he will see us fall. But God says that every weapon that is formed against us will not prosper. And we see that in, in the scripture of the Bible, that everything that the enemy has set upon us, it backfires on him. And that every weapon that he does will sharpen his own heart. And that the ditch that they have laid before him, they will fall into in the net. So we must be take courage that God is our savior, that God is our salvation, that we are not to be moved because we trust and have faith that God is on our side and he's our deliverer. God wants to be encouraged and to trust him, not to look at the situations that we're going through in this time, but to continue to keep our eye focused on him to finish the good fight of faith. It is not easy, but we must remember to trust the Lord and that he will never take us to a place or lead us through something that we can't overcome because it's already inside of us. Before we were born, God put it inside of us, the, the good work that we need to finish. So we must just trust God that he will deliver us from every situation and that we are not alone. That was the word that I that the Lord wanted me to bring today. I pray that it touched you, that it encouraged you, and that God will continue to to speak to you regarding what steps to do. But we are to be still and wait for the deliverance of the Lord unless God says otherwise. But I just thank the Lord for even giving us the, the power to 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 be still until we see him coming through to change the situations in our lives. I believe with all my heart that in this moment, that this season of waiting, waiting for him to deliver us, waiting for him to deliver us from our enemies, I just thank him because inside of us, something is raising and something is rising as we continue to grow in holiness and boldness for his kingdom. Something is happening while we wait. The Bible says, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Bible said, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So all these things are things that are hard and unnatural to the, to the flesh because the flesh always wants to help out God. But in the kingdom, that doesn't work because God wants to get the glory. And as we sit back and, and watch, uh, the, there's a scripture that, that says, sit on my right hand. And, and watch and and watch until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet and as we're sitting on the right hand that is a, that is a position of being still God doesn't say stand up next to me the Bible says sit at my right hand so we are supposed to be sitting and waiting till I make till we watch our enemies become a footstool and we will see it the scripture talks about it all over that we will see it with our own eyes the enemies fall because they're just not our enemies. They are the enemies of God. They are the enemies of the cross. And we see it all over the scripture, how every time somebody was trying to do a good work for the Lord, that the enemies would rise up against that person. We see enemy Saul against David. We see uh, some ballad and Tobias being against uh, the temple to be rebuilt. We see so many people coming against Paul and we just we continue to see how the enemy tries to rise up against the people of God to just to to make them tired so they can give up and just say like this is too hard and we see people giving up and we see people going back into the world and it's so sad because you could have done something you could have changed a generation for your descendants for your children's children but People give up. Don't give up, brothers and sisters. Continue to lean on God for the strength to get up and wash your face in the midst of sorrow and tears. Wash your face and trust and have hope in God that he will see us through and that he's gonna fix everything. So thank you guys for being here. I pray that you have a blessed week. I pray that the word of God will touch you, equip you, change you, motivate you, transform you for every good work that he has for you. And we'll see you guys next week in Jesus name. Okay.
Love you guys.